Here's a heads up to this podcast. It goes on for a nice long bit again. A lot of personal stuff I'm sharing again about massive ahas, things in my life, and the bel- all about beliefs, how just changing one small belief in your life will change your life hugely, greatly, and just create wonderful things for you. Have a listen. I think it's really good. Well, I hope it's really good. I enjoyed doing it, and I hope you all enjoy listening with me. Thank you. Oh, and if you're new to this, listen to the next bit. And if you're not, and you know what's going to come, zoom forward by about a minute and a half, and then I'll get right on. Hey, my name's Paul Clough, and I'm part of this thing I've called Unplugged Personal Development. It's a niche of one, the Personal Development Unplugged podcast. You see, in this genre of personal development, self-improvement, of becoming a better you, I believe things have been made way, 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 way too complicated. And I wondered why. And I don't think it's to make people like you or me feel better, feel good. I think maybe it's for the people who made it more complicated to feel better about themselves. And I don't want any part of that. So that's why I've created this podcast, the Personal Development Unplugged Podcast. And it's to break down these complicated ways. And I want to produce and develop powerful, new, yet simple ways. Remember, in simplicity, there's genius. And breaking down these processes, I'll be using hypnosis, NLP, timeline therapy, so many other things. And I'm doing it for one reason only. So you and me can become, if you choose to come on this adventure with me, to become the real you, the real you. Sing from your real voice, to show up, be authentic. All the stuff people talk about, but don't tell you how to do it. I want to break down those personal barriers, your personal barriers. I don't want to fix the things that didn't work, because the thing is, they didn't bloody work. And it's about finding better ways, and not using painful ways of the old sorts of ways people used to use, but creating pleasurable ways, passionate ways, to create real opportunities, to let your dreams come true, you know, get learning and developing new skills that make it happen. And the aim of this is not to create the old you, but for you to be fully the real you. So if that feels good, come and join me on this Unplugged Adventure. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. I've told this, well, part of this story before. You may not have heard it. But it was all about when I first started out in this wonderful place of hypnosis, NLP, change work. But the thing is, I started it for a very different reason than I'm doing it now. Because I I wouldn't say I was a horrible person. But I wanted to use hypnosis and NLP for not the best of intentions. I wanted to manipulate people for business purposes. So instead of having win-win, I won, you lost. And I wanted to be able to do that more and more. And you see, I went all the way. I drove 300 miles. Now, to some people, that's not a lot. But Uncle Paul doesn't travel very far normally. And therefore... Anything over 30 miles, I was a little bit out, well, well out of my comfort zone. And doing this stuff, doing hypnosis, NLP, I was well outside that zone. And I went to that course to learn hypnosis for this wonderful intention of, of, of succeeding at business at all costs. And the thing is, I had a massive aha moment as I stood up and the things I learned. I'll tell you about that in a minute. You see, I was also listening a little while, some time ago, to this amazing woman. Her name is Caroline Adams Miller. Maybe you've heard of her. She is now a coach, an executive coach in the US. She's a speaker, an author. One of her books is called My Name is Caroline. And you see, I was listening to her because when she was younger, she suffered from bulimia. And 
Apparently, this was a learned behaviour. She'd learnt it from her mother, because that was the thing people did. They would eat, and then, you know, well, well you know what bulimia is. Um, we don't go into those bits, but she, she was suffering from bulimia, and she felt, as she said, so alone, as if no one understood her. And that's maybe one of the intentions of bulimia. But could be different for everybody or anybody. But she said, one, one day, she was talking to somebody. I believe it was someone at school, like a teacher or uh, some type of uh, counsellor at school, at college. And as she was talking to her, she had this massive aha moment. And it was in, it was a change of belief, a belief that no, she wasn't alone. No, she wasn't getting iller by the moment because she was getting very, very ill. It was all of a sudden she had this aha moment in a change of belief. And that belief just suddenly rang out in her, resonated with her. And it was, I'm getting better one day at a time. And with that belief, one day at a time, she has changed herself into an amazing person, sharing, sharing this, her, her ha-ha moment, and the things that she's, oh, I'm going to say that again, and the things that she's learnt since then, through having that bulimia, and she's educating, she's sharing, she's making sure that no one else feels so alone, and how she did, and to let them know there's a way of getting better one day at a time. And it doesn't matter what it is, if you think about it. It doesn't have to be believe me. It could be absolutely anything, couldn't it? Getting better one day at a time. It's that baby steps we talk about sometimes. But it's incredible. It really, well, it, it reminded me. Because this thing about beliefs, I am so big into beliefs and how beliefs well, run our world. Especially the beliefs about our identity. Now, you, I don't know if you remember, uh, if you listen to uh, the last larger podcast, I think it's number 89. But, you know, do, do you believe in you? And we talked about that model, uh, the Robert Diltz model, where beliefs and values are so high up, it's just before connection to everything else. So any belief that you have will affect what you learn, your capabilities, will affect how you use those skills and capabilities and will affect what you do in the environment that you, you try to do it. And you change one core belief about yourself and a belief about your identity. I am, I can't, I can, I'm not. You change any of the negatives to a positive and man, everything changes. Those true values that you have suddenly come to the fore and be totally supported by beliefs. You begin to learn more, be more skillful, more capable. You begin to use all those skills, beliefs into the behaviours, wonderful positive behaviours that support you in being you. And you do it everywhere. And you see, that's the thing. When I work with a client, I it's just the way I work, I guess, and I've, it's been developed in me or by me or what have you. But I always seem to find that my clients have a ne negative belief. and it's Or it's a, a belief that no longer supports them. Let's not call them negative beliefs straight away. But it's a belief that maybe when something happened in their life and the wisdom that their unconscious mind had, the experience that their unconscious mind had, was the only thing they could do by setting up this negative behavior with this belief. You know, beliefs such as, I'm not good enough. You know, I don't belong here. I'll be found out. I'm stupid. But I know they have this, this intention a wonderful positive intention for having this unsupporting belief. And we're going to be talking about how we find intentions. Uh, and that was in the hypnosis track, 87.1. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's keep on this thing about my clients, because we find they have a feeling or a behavior that 
they just don't like anymore. You know, it, the feeling, we don't even have to label the feeling, it's just a, a feeling that comes along with that behaviour. And it's no longer supporting them because they just don't feel good. They just don't feel good. And I just, I treat everything as a behaviour. Bulimia is a behaviour. Smoking is a behaviour. Um, being is a behaviour. Everything to me is a behaviour and generally supported by a belief, positive or negative. And that belief is generally about their identity. And when I find that belief and we change that belief, I don't give them the new belief, but they, they find, or their unconscious mind finds that there's a conflict by having that belief and what they want, that positive intention. That, that belief is no longer supporting that intention. We identify the negative belief and then we f we let it go. We learn from that event, the very first event. That's just an unconscious thing, part of what I do in, in my clinic. But we learn from that uh, that. That and let go of that limiting belief. That's a better way of putting it. A limiting belief. Because it no longer does, supports us, but it limits us. And then at the end of the session, as a test, I'll get my client to go, do you know, say that old belief you had, had about yourself. And they'll either smile and go, I'm not saying that because that's absolutely pony now. Or pony, pony and trap. You got it. And, or they'll say it. And the, the words will come out shaky. They'll come out as if it's not real anymore. Whereas before, maybe half hour before that, that belief was cast iron. It was rock solid. Their voice, it was theirs. They had it attached to them. And that's the wonderful thing. Because so when it starts to happen, I know. I don't even ask, you know, what belief do you have about yourself? And they'll go, and they'll come up with this wonderful, empowering belief. And when that happens... I just know inside that the change has begun. They are going to start to change their world because when they change their belief to a supporting belief, I know they're going to start accessing wonderful resources such as positive emotions, healthy emotions, positive, healthy behaviours. They'll start doing wonderful things that before they just, because they didn't believe in themselves, they wouldn't. Do, they couldn't do them. They wouldn't do them. And now they can. And they go out in the world and test the work we done. We done. We test the work we did to make sure that it's really, really working. And that's so empowering. So empowering. You see, that was part of my aha. You see, I thought I wasn't a people person because I wanted this manipulating thing. And I found out that I love people. I love helping people change. I'll go along with them and do whatever I can to help them change. I'll be with them every step of the way, whether it's in hypnosis, with the NLP, or whatever we do. And I love it. And the buzz I get from helping people is, well, it's out of this world. It's a thing that just makes it so worthwhile. And that was one of my biggest ahas because, you know, I'm... I am a people person. I love helping. I've got the ability to help. I've learned various things that help. Help people, help me. And that was part of that aha. You see, there was another one. Another thing that happened on that very course. And again, it was like, it wasn't a big aha, but it did, I do have a completely different belief because when I went to that course, that very first course, I hated talking to people. It was my worst nightmare. Nightmare? Nightmare. One-to-one, -one, I'm perfect. No worries whatsoever. But when it got to three or four, I used to get anxiety. I would hide. I would push people to the front of the queue. No, 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 you do it, you do it, you do it. I wouldn't do a thing because I would literally panic. But now, and I'll give you the, excuse me, I'll give you the example. In the very first course, we had to stand up with a microphone, say who we were, our name that is, and what we wanted from the course. 
And all I kept saying to myself, which was absolutely crazy, is don't forget your name, Paul. Don't forget your name, Paul. Don't forget your name, Paul. Don't forget your name. Don't forget your name. And what did I do? I stood up and said, um, I'm from Cambridge. That was it. I'll tell you my name later. Thank you. And I sat down. And my heart, amazing. But now, I love talking to everyone. I talk to you. But I also like talking to large groups of people. And in the, the, the people I talk to, I see as friends now. I see them as, as not this hiding, I don't belong here, people hate me, they're, 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 they're going to pull me down, I'm going to get found out. But now it's, I know they're friendly and they want to hear what I, what I have to say. And they want to learn because I've got some things I can help share with them. I have a message and I love all of that. And that's why I'm doing this part, I guess. It's just another way of sharing myself to you. Hmm, there you go. I'll give you a few more examples in a minute. But the thing is, we want to talk about, this is all very well, Paul, having these aha moments. And when we get them, absolutely brilliant. But what do I do now? What do I, what do, I do? This is you, that is, not me. This is me speaking as you. What do I do when I've, I've got this behavior I don't like? This, this feeling that kicks off in different places in my life, different contexts, and I don't like it. It, it you know, it creates either anxiety, panic, uh, a way of hiding, all that stuff. You, you know it if you felt it. And you don't have to have a big, 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 big problem for this. If you do, obviously I would suggest that you go to one to one. A one-to-one with, with someone like me, you know, uh, and you can be in anywhere in the world when you think about it, because we have things like Skype, we have Zoom meetings. But if you can get one-to-one with somebody who I believe in, you know, do that does NLP hypnosis and a thing called timeline therapy. And I don't like the word therapy in timeline therapy, but that's never a word. But the processes in timeline therapy for letting go of negative emotions and This thing what blew my mind when I learned it, letting go of negative beliefs. It just, boom. You let go of that once you establish that belief and it lets it go. You get your unconscious mind to learn and let go of that belief within minutes. It's incredible. I love teaching uh, timeline therapy with my son. We we teach um, so many people. We have like courses with over 100 people on that course and it's absolutely brilliant to see people learn how to do this. Anyway, I've digressed. If you have something too big or you think it's pretty big, go and see someone one-to-one. And if you want to send me an email, paul at paulclough.co.uk, I'll give you some advice. No worries whatsoever. But if it's just a feeling, a negative feeling that isn't too big, that you go, oh, I just don't like it that much. You know, or a behavior that you just wish you wouldn't keep doing, you know, and it's a negative behavior. Maybe it's a little bit about public speaking. Maybe it's just a little bit about going to speak with your boss. Maybe it's a little bit about sharing yourself. Maybe it's just a little bit about, you know, allowing yourself to be authentic. Um, got the word vulnerable in air quotes. Um, you know, to be you, to sing from your own voice. Maybe just that little bit of re- reticence to go there. Well, you can do this yourself. I'm sure you can. In a very simple way. Now, the simple way is to understand that feeling. The feeling or that behavior. And if you, if you think of that behavior, just play it back in your mind maybe at one specific time when you had that behavior. Notice the feeling that you have with it. What emotion? And again, don't label it. You don't need to label it. So it doesn't have to be panic, anxiety, whatever. You go, oh, there's that feeling in the pit of my stomach, maybe. And just understand it. Feel it. Be there. And when you feel it and be there, just ask yourself, what belief do I have about myself when I have this feeling? And notice what comes up without even thinking. And it could be something like, I'm not good enough. Or, 
I'll get found out. Or, I'm stupid, I can't learn. Something like that. Just notice what comes up. And if we can, we'd like to find the intention of that. Because it's nice to find that intention, so that would help you to find that how that belief is no longer supporting you. And if you remember, on, I think it was 87, hashtag 87 podcast, 87.1, there's a hypnosis track that uh, that guides you to finding the intention of that negative behavior, unsupporting belief. But all you have to do is to find that, go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. They're all there, and that's probably near the top. And just have a listen to that. You'll find, you'll, you'll find something works. You'll find, like, intuitively, if you trust your unconscious mind, intuitively something will, will come up as a belief. And all you have to do is just record it. Just record it. Now, you could do, you remember, is to get in the right state while you're thinking of this. So maybe when you're thinking of that feeling and you want to know what that belief is, what type of state would be a great state to be in? You see, for me, it might be, hmm, curious. And I'm just curious. I just want to find out. I want to learn. So what's that learning state? Now, take that learning state one more, one step up into a different thing where you learn something good. And you learn to easily and effortlessly. Now, if you can remember a time when you learned something that you didn't know and you learned it just came to you intuitively. And as you find that state, then ask that question. What do I believe about myself? And notice what happens when you allow it to happen. And again, to set your state, I've even got a process for that. That's 86.1 at the same place. PaulCloughOnline.com forward slash podcast. So you've got them all there now. I'm I'm building up this wonderful library for you so you can start to to use these hypnosis uh, processes, the NLP processes, to allow you to do exactly what you want. Obviously, if it gets, if it's a little bit too, too big, come and see someone like myself. You see, here's something that you might help a little bit. I've got another couple of stories. And they're they're true stories. I had this lovely lady come to work with me. And she had this real problem of blushing. And when I say blushing, it wasn't just a little bit of, little bit of redness. She was like a, a bright red matchstick. Her head was glowing. And she said, you know, I really just want to be noticed for my, for the things that I can do. But, but people, just keep, well, they won't let me do the things. They won't even let me go to meetings now because I blush. And I can't show how good I am at, at the meetings and what I know. Is they won't even let me take the minutes of a meeting because if they ask me, what did we just say? I blush, they blush, we all blush, we all blush together, and nothing happens. So I don't get, get invited to meetings. But I know I'm really good at what I do. And when we were talking, we suddenly find, found a long time ago, one of her very early birthdays, no one was taking any notice of her. She blushed. Everyone took notice of her. And now she found the intention. The intention was to be noticed. But her unconscious mind at the time when she first learned how to get her noticed carried on doing the same thing, but just made it bigger and bigger, like a snowball getting more and more and more and more. And it was simply then noticing that, yeah, you're doing what I want you to do, but there's a big conflict because I want to be noticed, but not through my blushing, but through who I really am. And all of a sudden, a very powerful belief came into her mind that she was really good at what she did. And she'd be safe in saying it. And she would be able to be noticed for how good she was. Blushing stopped. Amazing, isn't it? And you see, what I think you need to do, though, is, I don't want to say it, as usual, Jenny Journal. You need something to write your thoughts down. Even though you may not, we don't be intellectual about this and, and consider them as we're writing, just write down some thoughts that come to your mind, you know, and, and just ask yourself, as you say, you know, what do I believe about myself when I have this feeling? 
What is the intention from that behavior? What be, even if you just do it a little bit intellectually, think, what is that behavior doing for me? It could well be that if it's something like I'm not good enough and you don't put yourself out into the world to do stuff, it's stopping you from getting hurt, maybe. Stopping you from getting embarrassed or being embarrassed by other things. But really, you're hurt. The, the big conflict is you're hurt because you want to be able to do those stuff and hiding and feeling I'm not good enough and anxious and all that stuff just doesn't work anymore. But once you understand that and just let your pen write, you can say, well, actually, you know, this, say we've got this, uh, I'm not good enough as a belief about myself. And we write that down. And, and when we when we say it out loud, it has some feeling with us, as if it was in those contexts, it's true. That's what I really believe. We can actually look and say, well, does this belief support us? Is it really doing what it's trying to do? Because there are so many different things that I can use, as in different behaviours. But if we had a different belief, what belief could we have? That would support us and keep that intention to keep us safe maybe another example I had this great guy come to work with me but unfortunately um it split up with his wife and he had two teenage girls and two teenage girls would then when he had them at the weekends they would talk about things that he just didn't feel good about it was as if they were embarrassing and he just felt i really want to talk to I can't, I can't. And he would go and disappear into the into the TV room and would give them money to go to the pictures or the cinema, whichever you call it, to go into town to do some shopping. And literally, when he had them at the weekend, he didn't see them because he was hiding. And he had this feeling that he just can't, I just can't talk to him. I'm not strong enough. And as we were talking during that, that session and doing a bit of hypnosis and things like that, he had this memory pop up. And he remembered that he had been bullied. Not hugely, not like you hear from uh, a lot of people, you know, where they have a very terrible time. He said, you know, I was just taken aside, beat up by these boys and had some money stolen from me. But it's the same feeling, Paul. And I went, well, who did you go and tell? He said, no one, I just went and hid. Oh, no, it's the same feeling, same behaviour. And I just said, what belief do you have about yourself when you have that feeling? And he just said, I'm not strong enough. I'm just not strong enough. And he said, the thing is, if people heard me say that, they'd, they'd go, that's not you, but it is me. I can feel it. But also, he said, I'm a salesman. I can talk to any bloody person. I love talking to people, but as soon as my girls ask me something, I get that feeling. I'm not strong enough. And I clam up and move away. We did some work to let go of that belief. Now, some people would think, well, I wonder what the new belief was. I always ask, what's that new supporting belief you have? And you may think that, well, it's going to be, I'm strong. I'm strong enough. But it wasn't. It was a very simple belief that meant so much to him. It was, I'm okay. It's okay. And I thought, okay, that seems good. But he said, no, that, that really feels good to me that it's okay, I'm okay. And when he came back to give me some feedback, he said, I can't believe it, Paul. I'm now talking to my daughters. We're having a great time. And if they say something that I you know, don't really want to talk, because they're trying to maybe embarrassing me or something like that, I know it's okay to say, girls, you know, you're embarrassing your dad a little bit. Let's move on. Let's talk about something else. And it's okay. And I'm okay. And guess what? They're okay with it because they smile. They said they smiled at me and they knew they were, you know, just embarrassing their old dad. And he said, but now that belief is, I'm okay, it's okay, is affecting me in so many other places in my life because I am okay. And it's okay to be me. And it changed his life. That one simple belief changed his life. The ripples of that change went so far and wide. So what I'm trying to say here is, through all of this, you know, there's a few things. Some of my notes I made was, you know, change can happen in an instant. That aha moment from Caroline Adams Miller, I'm getting better one day at a time. In an instant, changed her life. 
my aha moments of, you know, this isn't right. You're a people person and you've got lots to share. That's changed my life. I have begin to learn other things. I begin to talk to other people. I've taken my career in a completely different, different direction. And I love what I do. And the other thing I've really noticed is this thing. I just had another aha in my mind now. And I'll tell you about that one. Because I just read my notes. It says, you know, you're not alone and you have support. And I just remembered what I write in the front of every one of my Jenny journals. And it's, you're not alone. You're not by yourself. You're with yourself. And that makes me feel really good. It's like my, my belief. Change is comfortable. That's the other thing. Change is comfortable. It's easy. It doesn't have to take a long time. Forget what people say. Change can be in an instant. You just have to change you. Because we said before, change comes when you change yourself first. So your world changes when you change you. And when you change you, everything changes for the better. Wow. So much here. I really hope, you know, I've called this, I think, I believe, you know, but you do believe. You believe in everything. And I believe your beliefs will take you to wherever you choose. All you have to do is choose the right belief that feels good, that supports you and allows you to access the resources, the skills, the emotions, behaviours that help you get your dreams to become real. Your wishes to become dreams, your dreams to become will, will, real, and your reality to be exactly the way you want it right now. And then your future becomes right now what you want. It's that old thing about, you know, serendipity seems to just keep happening to me. You know, I get coincidences just keep happening to me. I get so lucky. This is all about getting that right belief. And when you get it, bam. There you go. What I'm going to ask, and I'm going to, at the end, I'll drop in that little bit about all the things you can find and the things I'd like you to do. But what I would like you to do, if it's possible, is like pay this forward by, I always say, can you, you know, share it with all your friends and all your people who aren't your friends and that, but that's difficult. I don't understand that. If you could just share this to three people, three of your closest friends who don't listen to this, because when you change beliefs, you will change their world. And maybe then they'll listen to different podcasts here. But if you could just share this, pay it forward just three times and maybe get them to, to pay it forward if they like it. You know, let's get this community of unplugged personal development, this little niche of one that we have into something special. And we say about this integrated field of learning, this sharing you don't lose it. In fact, you're going to gain by it. You're going to gain by it by the feedback you get from them. But you're also going to get like the, the law of reciprocation. What you put out, it'll be reciprocated back to you. Not necessarily by them, but by others. That's what happens in the world. The law of reciprocation. It's lovely. And it, it tends to work that you do one and you get something back ten times, a hundred times. Because you did it without wanting anything back in return. And when you don't want anything back in return, it's like abundance. It comes and dumps a wonderful lot of reciprocation on you. <laughs> and when you take from abundance, bloody thing just keeps growing because that's what abundance does. There you go. We, Well, I've enjoyed myself. I hope you have listening. And I hope you've made some notes and get that Jenny journal and committing to do this type of thing for yourself and have more fun than you can stand. Enjoy, as we say, every heartbeat. Have, well, just have more passion than you can ever believe possible. Speak to you real soon. Bye-bye now. Hey, thanks for listening. And just before you go on to do whatever you're going to do now, I'd just like to ask just a couple of things, really. One is, obviously, I've talked about sharing. And if you could share this podcast to a few people, pay it forward, that would be absolutely awesome. But also, if you go to places like iTunes, subscribe. Because subscriptions mean that we go into the charts it means we spread our word to other people. And also a review would be absolutely even more awesome. Even more awesome. And also know that obviously hypnosis tracks 
They're all at paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. They're all there for you. They're all downloadable. So you can put them on any device you like. You can keep them forever with my compliments. And you can make up some wonderful things for yourself. Different add processes together and have a great time. And also, if you'd also have a look round at paulcloughonline.com, it's the only thing other than my pocket that supports this show. We don't have advertisers. We don't do interviews and things like that trying to get around. So if you'd have a look on there, there's a couple of good, I believe, are really good courses. There's Supreme Inner Confidence, something to allow you to be who you really are, be authentic. You know, know that you're, you've got inner strength. You've got all the competence and confidence that you ever want. And there's also Free Your Life from Anxiety. That has five days. The first five days are absolutely free. You get a, an email every day with new things to, to do. And at the end of those five days, you may even have let go of that anxiety. That's my aim. And if not, you move on to the next part of the program. They're all there. There's a couple of other paid hypnosis tracks where we've done a process, a series of processes for you, such as creating that inner mind palace and things like that, or real deep, deep relaxation. But anyway, please have a look. It would be great if you did. Love some feedback. You can always contact me through my website, Paul Clough Online. No, it's not. It's paulclough.co.uk. And you can contact me through that, that web page. And you can also contact me on email, paul at paulclough.co.uk. Love your feedback. Love your questions. Love, love you. Okay. Have more fun than you can stand. Personal. Personal development. Personal development. Unplugged. 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 Unplugged.